Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here, and today we are going over my top five worst grinds. Meaning that these are five tech lines that I had an absolute miserable time grinding through. And if you're deciding to go up these tech trees, which many of them I actually would recommend you grind up, just be prepared to you know put in some work to get through some of these ships or save up some free xp to skip over a couple of the ships in this line and in the case of our number one i would actually highly recommend just grinding up the free xp to skip most of the line <laughs> all in all now to be clear too in most cases i do actually enjoy quite a few ships from these respective grinds but again when you're going through it and you're stuck on a, a ship or two that's just you know, especially not great it's a uh, it's a pretty harsh time shall we say before we get going if you do have an interest in firearms or anything that's just kind of cool or sci-fi i did fo uh, feature my mp5 clone from stargate in yesterday's video if you're into that type of stuff please go check that out but anyway let's go ahead and get on into it after that shameless plug shall we so starting at number five we have the british light cruisers now, the reason the British Light Cruisers are at number 5 is because, truth be told, there's actually quite a few really good ships in this grind. The learning curve going from most other Light Cruisers to the British Light Cruisers is what earns them a spot on this list. Because the British Light Cruisers are some of the most Light Cruiser Light Cruisers to ever exist. Those of you that have spent any amount of time shooting at them should know that. Of course, they are made of absolute tissue paper, and in most cases, their armor or geometry or something about them is set up to the point to where, unlike where, in most other cases, against most other light cruisers, you might wind up just overpinning the ship and, you know, not doing a devastating amount of damage to them. With the British light cruisers, they just absolutely get deleted outright. And this trend starts early in the line and continues all the way up to the Minotaur. Now, of course, the Minotaur being the Tier 10, the Minotaur and the Neptune are actually really, really good ships. It's just that that whole midsection, when you're admittedly at a tier spread where most of the cruisers do kind of just explode if you look at them a little bit too hard, the British light cruisers are somehow more explodey, right? And plus, you have to deal with their awkward deceleration. That gets a lot of players into trouble. If you guys don't know, the British Light Cruisers, they don't stop like other cruisers. They kind of just keep going for, I think it's like 40% more distance than most other cruisers can stop in. So, a lot of times, you'll see you know Tier 7 or Tier, tier 8 British Light Cruiser players just kind of gliding out of their smoke screen because they're so used to other Light Cruisers being able to stop you know, relatively fast, but not the British ones. Plus, too, the British Light Cruisers do not have HE. They do get improved pin angles on their AP to kind of make up for that, but they don't have HE. She, so that's also pretty awkward if you're not used to you know targeting the superstructure certain parts of the ship that you can pin with those improved pin angles you're just sitting there struggling to do damage getting deleted in a salvo or two often often cases just one salvo from a battleship and it's a very rough learning curve but again once you get a hold of it the line really does start to take off and click for you so that's why they're at number five it's a miserable grind but once you get the hang of it it's manageable and then once you get good at it in the minotaur and the neptune you're downright fearsome all right going on down to number four we have german battleships the main line not the battle cruisers the battle cruisers are just tremendously fun so i was very fortunate to go up the german battleship line back in the day when they could actually you know kind of regularly brawl back you know 2018 2019 but in today's World of Warships, oh my god. I could not imagine trying to go up that line, playing that line like a full-on brawling line in today's World of Warships. Which means you typically have to go up the German battleship line, main battery focus. Which they're not terrible at, but they're not overtly great at either. Today, I tend to play, you know, the now, the Bismarck, and the FDG. Like, very large, heavy cruisers building into main battery guns, because they do have good reloads on their main battery guns, but the accuracy, even after all the buffs they've gotten, isn't great. 
and the detection ranges aren't great either. Again, you can build into them to get them down, but still, like, you're spotted from the moon in most cases. You got a huge superstructure that can get farmed out, and that starts, again, quite early. I mean, if you just take a look at the German battleship superstructures, it's like a whole freaking city has been built on the decks. So, plenty of stuff for HE spammers to farm, plenty of stuff for battleship AP to pin like not over pin just outright pin and get full damage on your superstructure from the ships are huge so there's tons of space for all those he shells ringing down on you to start fires and yeah it's it's a really rough grind in today's world of warships the price in the tier 10 is of course absolutely worth it in my opinion with those german 457 millimeter guns and once you get through it and you're able to go back and rather than being forced to consistently play those ships over and over again you can go back you know pick up the bismarck and you know configure it differently and go for the secondary build and take it out when you want to have that you know that that old german brawling battleship if you want to try to do that for a couple of rounds you know but again if you're stuck playing it in today's world of warships especially if you're grinding through it and you're in the stock hole and such it's, it's just an absolute misery for a good chunk of the tech line today which does really hurt me saying that because i used to, be able to say that yeah the during battleships if you play them as brawlers you know three years ago four years ago they're actually quite fun up and down the line until you get to the fdg but now it's just god it's it's a it's a not a happy time for the german battleships right now and again the identity shift from a secondary build to a main battery build does help them keep relevant today because again they do have good reload times on their main guns and if you are on the kiting side of things the armor is very good for that but it's just an absolute pain to have to consistently play something that's out of meta if you're grinding your way up to the Preussen. Again, Preussen is definitely worth it, even if you're not a fan of brawling. You just build into the main guns and have a ridiculously fast reload on eight 18-inch guns, which is, of course, great by all measurements, of course. But again, a line that is old, is out of meta, is a pain to get through in today's World of Warships. So going on down now to number three. We have the Dutch Cruisers. Now, I know on my Cruiser tier list video, I put these guys at F tier because of how bad the, the, the line was to grind up and down. And that was mostly joking. Realistically, I probably would have put them, if you, you know, gun to my head, make me place them on a legit uh, tier list. Probably like C maybe like low B depending upon you know what aspect you're looking at them from but the grind is absolutely miserable with these guys the gun accuracy is not accurate at all the mid-tier cruisers do kind of just explode if you look at them the, the the wrong way and the airstrikes once you do get access to them yeah it's cool and all but you do have to find the ship that's sitting completely still to really make most use of usage out of it and actually you know get bombs on target uh typically the the dutch airstrike is only really useful if there's like a salem or a mosva or you know a des moines or one of those island hugging cruisers are just hugging an island and, and refuse to move because realistically the how long the bombs take to take to to fall from their drop height to the surface of the of the water it's so long 90 percent of ships are going to be able to go from a dead stop to getting out of the way of them as long as the captain is, is paying attention. Of course, when you get to like some of the larger cruisers and battleships, that's a different story. And yeah, if you do catch a battleship that's either beached or stuck on an island and they're within your airstrike range, yeah, it's going to ruin the guy's day. But that's a one class in one situation. Battleships at speed, again, most of them can easily avoid the majority of the bombs. So there's that. And then when you do get up to higher tier and you get the Golden Lou, and I do like the Golden Lou to be clear, I do I do really like it, but like the gun accuracy, I don't know how you get a cruiser with guns that are this inaccurate, you know? They're giving me like old school German battleship vibes sometimes. And that is kind of all set by the fact that for some reason these very heavy cruisers with large caliber guns have amazing HE for some reason. But the AP is so... I mean, it's not bad when it hits. It's really not bad when it hits at all. It's just getting it to hit. The guns are so inaccurate. And anything other than like a drive-by with the AP on the Golden Lou and the higher tier ones, uh, you're not really going to be getting the accuracy that you need to make usage of AP. Because AP, you got to get it to hit 
where it can bite into it, otherwise it's going to bounce off. Uh, HU, of course, doesn't really matter where you hit, it's, as long as you can, you know, pin the, the, the armor, you're going to get damage, right? And, of course, the chance to start a fire, and yes, again, the ship does have good HE, surprisingly so, but, you know, for most of us, when these ships came out, we saw the tier 10 and went, oh, it's the Dutch Shornhorst, you know? That's cool, and then you think, okay, it's German Battleship, it's going to, you know, based on the German Battleship, it should be pretty tanky and have good AP, and then it comes out and not really. The armor's good against most cruisers, but for some reason, it can get pinned from just about any angle, it seems like, when you're playing it, you know? So, yeah, I mean, again, I do like the Golden Line, and those complaints there you find those up and down the line as well it's just a misery to get through the mid-tier but i do think it's absolutely worth it to get to the golden line it's just a painful grind in that mid-tier region now our next entry it's kind of a pain the whole way up and down and that brings us to our number two slot which is the japanese heavy cruisers good god are these ships old they're so old it's kind of funny, too. You can see how the game has gotten pushed back further and further and further in terms of engagement ranges because the Japanese heavy cruisers used to be the long-range HE spammers. That's what these guys were back when the game first came out and for many, many years. Go look at the main battery gun ranges. <laughs> oh, the main battery gun ranges are so mid and short by today's standards. The light cruiser line somehow has longer ranges than the heavy cruiser line, which that, okay, that makes sense how. But yeah, oh lord. And they haven't really been touched much by Wargaming. Uh, the the Zal thankfully has been buffed here in recent years to where it's a, a bit better than it used to be. Um, I mean, like, Zal does have the gun range to, you know, stay in the fight and do what she needs to do especially with her concealment but um again compared to a lot of other cruisers today what used to be good range is just like oh that's workable not to mention too because they're older ships the geometry is a little funky on the japanese cruisers and again just like the british cruisers those of you that have shot at these cruisers know that for some reason you'll hit the flagpole but then the engine room will blow up because reasons and math and really 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 freaking old ship models <laughs> so yeah they're, they're just kind of painful up and down to play now the the, the the line does really pick up around tier 8 tier 9 and then of course the Zao I still think Zao is a really solid cruiser in today's world of warships especially for randoms especially for today's meta it's a really great kiter uh, the torpedo angles are of course atrocious atrocious up and down but once you get to the to the Ibuki which is the tier 9 you you have completed the grind right like Ibuki is a really really great tier 9 cruiser and you can just enjoy Ibuki enough and then you unlock the Zao in a couple of days from playing the Ibuki right so yeah it's just an old line that hasn't really been updated that sorely needs some love from wargaming that you know we have so many heavy cruisers that are great he spammers you know the british uh heavy line for example i'm just talking about the dutch line as well that these guys really need some love from wargaming and yeah it, it is sad to see that you know an old og line is kind of painful not kind of painful it is painful to get through a lot of cases in today's world of warships and again keep in mind too a lot of if you don't you know, look at this. If you just look at the stats, kind of in passing, make sure you're looking at the stats for the stock modules and such, not for the fully upgraded ships. And when you see the stock ranges on some of these Japanese cruisers, it's like, oh lord, how do they function? <laughs> you know, at all. Granted, I don't think that many people are really grinding up to this owl today. You know, but now we get all the way down to our numero uno, which is should be no surprise to many of you here, the Italian battleships good god sap is just a balancing nightmare and the italian battleships is definitely a symptom of that or i guess that could be a cause of that well, i don't know i think symptom would probably be the uh or i guess the result would probably be the best way to describe these ships so the italian battleships how do you balance large caliber sap 
sap that can you know if it can pin it it delivers high alpha damage and of course because it's sap which sap basically functions as he with a negative fire chance but bigger alpha than he normally has so again if you can pin it you're doing good he and uh if you were here when the italian cruisers were added in those guys with cruiser caliber sap were absolutely wrecking face and then when these things got announced uh huh, huh it's like okay you had a hard enough time bouncing cruiser caliber sap how are you going to balance Battleship Caliber Sap? Yeah, the answer, make everything incredibly inaccurate and give it a very long reload time. That's how you do it. So, yeah, and the mid-tier ships, mid-tier battleships are not that accurate. And these Italian battleships kind of take it to another level by being even more inaccurate and having longer reload times. Now, these ships were designed when Deadeye was a thing. Deadeye is an old commander skill where you would get a 10% boost to your accuracy when you were undetected. So, the Italian battleships, of course, have exhaust smoke. You can go undetected, get a pop off a couple of accurate salvos, because, you know, even though you're in smoke, your bloom does go out, but it's to a lesser range than if you weren't in smoke. So, you could do that and get you know some pretty decently accurate salvos. But when Dead Eye got removed, because surprise, when you make battleships super accurate for not being spotted, what does every battleship player do? Sit in the back of the map and not get spotted. So, surprise that that was the effect of that commander skill. When they got removed, when that got removed, the Italians didn't really get a buff. So now you have this awkward situation where the Italian battleships were incredibly inaccurate, even more so than they were designed to be. And it took Wargaming uh, like what half a year to buff a couple of their uh, a, a couple of their reload times, some of their sigma values, and some of their dispersions to where they're a bit more accurate than what they once were. But it is st still incredibly frustrating to play, and you know because you have sap, which is very powerful. You're still a battleship, you still need to make use of AP, so when it comes time to use AP, like close quarters engagement, you do fire at like 10 kilometers, but because, you know, you, you have sap, the guns are inaccurate, and half of your shells go in the water, the other half hit above where you aimed, and then two or three shells hit where you actually aimed, and because you have sap, the main battery guns are, are of a smaller caliber than most battleships at your tier, so there's one or two shells that did hit instead of, you know, potentially doing some devastating damage. They do okay damage, and now you gotta sit there and wait for like a 32, 33 second reload. So, yeah, they have been getting some love recently, but if you can save up the free XP to get to the Lepanto, which is where the line gets good, that's the tier 9, I most definitely would, because it's, it's, no, just no, I, I, no, it's pain, and it does suck, because it's the Italian Navy, they were quite the formidable force during World War II, now they didn't have enough fuel to go everywhere, to go, to go anywhere really, but it was a big Navy during World War II, it was a major power, it was a major threat, and was the target of many attacks, because it was a major threat to the Allies during World War II. And then in game we get incredibly inaccurate ships with a gimmick munition. Oh, and they can, you know, 420 blazes they go along, so Yeah. Again, save up the free XP, get to the Lepanto. If you've already grinded up to tier nine, you know, if you are going up to tier nine and you are choosing the the Italian battleships as your first line up, first off, don't do that. Go play the Americans instead. Um or at least like the British battleships instead. Or even the Japanese battleships, really. Any of those three would be a good starting point. But anyway, yeah. Not a line for beginners. A line I would recommend to definitely save up the free XP and just get to the Lepanto. And then, you know, enjoy your Lepanto and your Columbo. But guys, that's it for today's video. If you did enjoy the, the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on way to 75,000 subs, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a great Monday and a great rest of your week. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.